Assalamu alaikum, good evening, and welcome to tonight's episode of Talking Point. I'm your host, Syed Niyad Ahmed. A nation that ruled the ocean's waves, the sun never set on its empire, is soon going to celebrate its own independence. By the end of next week, Britain will be out of the European Union. What a surprise. Is it independence? Is it dependence? We do not know. And what impact it will have on the minorities living in this country. To discuss this and the affairs of the Middle East, or perhaps the Middle East, wherever there is oil, there is turmoil. So we'll talk about these two topics in detail with our very distinguished guest, a gentleman who is a very well sought after guest on many talk shows, Mr. Nasheed Rahman. Thank you very much for coming along, sir, and for accepting our invitation. Thank you very much. I'm honored and privileged to be a, one of the distinguished guests in your long-lasting and prestigious show. Thank you very much, sir. You make, you add to the prestige. Thank you very much. Uh, Nasheed Saab, Nasheed Bhai, and Mr. Nasheed, the famous lawyer. What is, we have studied in detail, and you are involved in, in so many aspects of the, the Brexit, which is going to take place by the end of next uh, week. That will be another Friday, and that will be another episode of Talking Point. What impact will it have on us, our lives? Do you think that, uh, is it going to be beneficial? Is it going to be, there are advantages and disadvantages of uh, being part of EU, see. That we'll discuss later, see. But what impact will it, or how it will impact our lives? As we have been living in this country for, it is said that Brexit and the question of Brexit and what impact it will have has not been considered what, what, how the, 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 the ethnic minorities will react and how they will respond. Brexit is the long lasting, controversial and divisive issue in British history for last 50 years. Mm -hmm. From the very first moment, British political elites, British bureaucrats, British uh, students and liberals, they were so divisive and undecisive about Brexit. It is the result of that divisiveness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at least the, as a nation, Britain answered the question about Europe. Mm -hmm. It is this divisiveness that you're talking about, is it based on race or is it just we want to be separate from the Euro Europe? From my perspective, there's a three element. One is political class, one is economic class, and mm -hmm. another is liberal class. Mm -hmm. The economic class is so divisive, the most poorer end of the society, they will be most affected by Brexit, but mm -hmm. they are supporting Brexit. Yeah. They are misled. Either they are uh, feeded by all the media, you can say in Mr. Trump's language, fake media, yeah. fake news, and the very same news for last 10 years. If you look at Guardian and Telegraph, it's two different connotations, yeah. two different headlines, two different meanings. Uh, forget about the tabloids, most prestigious uh, news outlets in the whole world, yeah. they are explaining the same issue in different lights. And if you think about the inception of Britain in EU, it was divisive with a referendum. Mm -hmm. And Britain was not in hearts in mind in Brexit because Euro is not your currency. True. No uh, uh, Britain, uh, England, Wales, uh, Northern Ireland or Scottish people, they like uh, EU flag. No one in this country salute the EU national anthem and the whole nation is against EU ma military. Mm -hmm. In the century of e e European history, whenever any great conqueror, they want to conquer the whole Europe, there is bloodshed, bloodshed and bloodshed. In 70 years ago, we have seen the last bloodshed. I don't know where we are going. Well, let's hope not, uh, not any more bloodshed in, in the world. but. Uh uh, if we, for, for just for a short time, we, we move our focus on the Middle East, and which I always say Middle East rather than Middle. There's always uh, 
one country or another that is about, it's in the eye of war, see. We have seen uh, Iraq, we have seen uh, Libya recently. Uh, Iran has been target many times, uh, but there were uh, uh, flash points, but a, a war has not erupted there. Thankfully, many uh, so-called leaders, dictators, they have appeared and disappeared from the surface of the earth. Marcos was, uh, in the words of Mr. Reagan, the president, that he is a bitch, but he is our son of bitch. See. <laughs> that was Mr. Yes. Marcos. See. Yes. Uh, Shanshah of Iran was uh, the blue-eyed boy of America and the West. He didn't get a chance or, or a place to lie after his death in the West. See. He was sent to Egypt. Saddam Hussein was a blue-eyed boy, uh, boy for the West when he was fighting against Iran over Shat al Arab. Gaddafi was a favored chap, see. But they have all disappeared. So there is some of my friends who are in this business of journalism and, and uh, writing and analyzing things. They say that this is very closely related to the arms industry. Because in Mr. Trump's word, he likes business deals, see. And the road to Washington is infested with arms dealers. See. So that is what is happening, whether we live in Europe, whether we live in the Middle East, or whether we live in the Far East. There is always a threat of war looming our, over our head. See. But let's come back to our own shows and we have our own problems. See. We were not consulted as a, as a, as a group minorities, BME as we are defined as, see. We were not consulted individually as a, as a group. So that what will, what do we think, how it will impact our lives, see. We have been taken for granted that yes, we like it or we don't like it. We will have to accept it. You as a lawyer, you have been coming across uh, many people and they are probably scared of how it will impact their lives. First tell me, how it will impact our lives, or likely to? Okay. There is three promise from the prominent Brexiteers. The current Home Secretary, Priti Patel, she promised to the restaurant workers that mm -hmm. we will visa. Mm -hmm. You can bring anyone and everyone from uh, your village, yeah. your cousin, your nephew, your brother, they will work for you. Mm -hmm. And it, it, again, it will be a golden time. The current Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, he promised to African nations that it will be good for African nations. You are working very hard. It's a young population, booming population will come and work. And the whole Brexit team, they mentioned we will go for Commonwealth, Australia, Canada and USA for free trade and free movement. Yeah. Everything was lie. Everything was lie. So the focus is only business with America. Absolutely. And the second thing is the ethnic minority, they were misled. Mm -hmm. Personally, I am a supporter of Brexit, not for immigration, not for all these bogus ideas. From my bottom of my heart, I understand what is the division between Europe and UK. Mm -hmm. Whether in long run, in 50 years, in 100 years, it's a viable option for UK answer is no. Whether you can, UK can stand individually with good policy answer is yes. Question is, where is the policy? True. So why did we enter uh, EU? That was a divisiveness uh, in Conservative Party. If you look at Hazeltine and Margaret Thatcher, yeah. it is the politics of Margaret Thatcher and Hazeltine and uh, that elitists mm -hmm. from Oxford and Cambridge with the lords and baron, with the aristocrat and uh, the rulers. Mm -hmm. They really don't like the new labor and they were successful, they defer it for 15 years. <coughs> and Tony Blair was the main culprit about the Brexit from my perspective. Mm -hmm. He can defer the A8 nation for seven years, which is done by French, uh, German, uh, apart from Spain, Portugal and UK. And it is the starting point of anti-immigration rhetoric. Mm -hmm. And they send search party to East Europe. 
to bring people led by Peter Mendelssohn. Just unfortunate. Yeah, the, the spin doctor. Yes, spin doctor. Prince of darkness. <laughs> so from outset, Britain do not have any political will to stop the free movement of people. And from the bigoted uh, comment from Gordon Brown, it turned to empty immigration and politicians do not care about the people. If you look at the red belt of labor, it was the basis of power of Labour Party. Right. It's totally gone. And you you never know what will happen next. And Mr. Tony Blair, he abolished the exit stamp from the immigration in right. 1998. He conquered the power in 1997. In six month time, he abolished the exit stamp. What was in his mind? That I don't want to show any data, any information on how many people are coming from Europe, especially East Europe. And the perception of new labor was totally wrong, boom, boom, and boom. They don't understand boom and bust. Most effective exchequer in this country, Gordon Brown, was a failed prime minister. He cannot see 2008. He cannot see the prime, uh, subprime market in USA. Yes, Britain was not that affected, but it's in the mind. 2008 for immigration. But we did have our problems. Absolutely. But we are not affected like Germany, France or USA. True. And six tests for euro and uh, pound. It was a great policy from Conan Brown. He cannot uh, uh, implement it while he was the prime minister. And I am not an economist. I do not understand the share market. Mm -hmm. But what my understanding is the politics is run and controlled by the corporates, billionaires and bankers. True, true. And we failed on that sector. And what my personal understanding is, the bankers, the multimillionaires and uh, corporates, they cannot stand Brexit. And if we look at the misinformation, IMF, World Bank, Church of England, you name anything and everything. They say after 23rd June 2016, pound will be in the bottom low. 90% company will left UK. Mm -hmm. After almost four years, all predictions are wrong. Last governor of the Bank of England, Mark Carney, compelled to apologize. He mislead the nation. And Nigel Farage have that authority to say, shut up, Mr. Archbishop. Go to your church and do your religious thing, politics and your cup of tea. So you mentioned Nigel Farage. I have not heard his name for some time. Where is he? He is a very good operative. And from 1983, it was his single agenda and he fulfilled his agenda. And he know that he cannot control uh, his UKIP. Mm -hmm. He start a new party. And Brexit what party. my personal understanding is, as a closest friend of Mr. Trump, he will come back again. Right. It's just a matter of time. I know, you know he, he will not take uh, uh, the House of uh, uh, Lords membership. No. He will be in the Commons. Co commons. Yes. That, that's his. Where the action is. Yes, seven time failure, eight or nine time, he will be there. <laughs> well, it is said that the government is keen to adopt, the Prime Minister is keen mm -hmm. to adopt a more liberal migration regime than his predecessor. Is that right? That is criticism in Seth Theresa May. Yes, because he abolished the net migration policy of Theresa May and David Cameron, which was totally, totally rubbish. Without any research, without any uh, uh, consultation process, without any thinking of a minor, they adapt that uh, uh, notion just for cheap publicity and vote. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the Net migration. What is net migration? The British people are going out from the UK and the non-EU people are coming inside. So they include the students within that statistics. And but they are not migrants. They are not migrants. And 70% of students are going back. Right. And 34% of students are from China. 16% mm -hmm. of students are from India. 95% of Chinese and Indian students are going back. True. So they are not taking the consideration of that students. We are since 2010. They failed on that promise and then in 2015, Mr. Cameron said, no if no but. 
I'll make it 100, uh, uh, below the 100,000. 100, and only in 90s, the ratio is up mm -hmm. from 18,000. Always it has go down because most of the British people they are going out. Great Irish migration to uh, USA, right, uh, the uh, 10 pound uh, scheme in Australia, and then uh, the boom in Middle East. You are the prime example. As a British national, I you spend really. your good uh, time in Middle East. You see hundreds of thousands of uh, British nationals working in the Middle East. True. So it, it is the uh, politics. And Mr. Bron Johnson, from the outside, he is saying Australian based point based system. The one thing he never take under consideration, Australia is a continent, not right. a small island. Australia vast resource, Australia have manufacturing, Australia have uh, the poultry and uh, so many other things and they have so many outlets. Okay sir, time for a break. Thank you for being with us. We will be back after this very short break. Don't go away. <laughs>